Greetings, Internet. It's One More Voice, here to talk about things. What else? After all, people, places, things, concepts, there's... That pretty much covers everything, you know. Go ahead and let me know if I missed something. So, what am I talking about today? I really don't plan these out ahead of time. I kind of talk about things and then I just upload them. Again, potato camera, inherited mic, or gift of a mic. I don't know why I should inherit it. Inheritance, that'd be nice. So, what am I talking about today? Right. Warhammer 40k and feminism now. I'm pretty sure pretty much every single person in the Western world, modernized world, or anywhere with an internet connection knows what feminism is. Uh, but just for the uh, just for the recap, it's a very sticky definition, and I'm sure that every single person has their own definition for it. The dictionary has a definition for it, and more or less it's advocacy for women's rights, which is good. Women make up more than half the population. Women are people. Men are people. Everyone should have rights. Unfortunately, this is not all that it is, because, you know, there are always some people that take things way too far. And, of course, when people take things too far, all the crazies start coming out of the woodwork and following them. So, I think that uh, I think egalitarian might be a better banner to fly under, because it's really hard to... Actually, no, I just... Okay, caught myself. It is really easy to be a radical egalitarian. What's that? This person has an IQ of 80? Mm, can't have any smart people. We must handicap all the smart people. Yes, thank you, Harrison Bergeron, for bringing us, or the author of Harrison Bergeron, for bringing us that horrifying concept. So, moving right along. Warhammer 40k is a science fiction sort of fantasy-esque space opera setting. It's basically a huge fictional setting that's been around for decades and decades. I think it either started in the late 70s or early 80s, but it's been around for a very long time. It has generated video games, books, no movies for some reason, tabletop games, tabletop war games, uh, graphic novels, it's basically, it's a very large and expansive intellectual property owned by Games Workshop. Now, because Games Workshop has a legal team that is horrifyingly efficient and aggressive, I do not own any piece of Warhammer 40k, aside from, uh, let's see, no, no, I don't own any of it. So, again, I'd have a nicer camera if I did. So, Warhammer 40k. Very interesting setting to say the to say the least, and feminism is a political movement, which apparently has a beef with Warhammer 40k. Now it's easy to have it's easy to have a beef with an aspect of Warhammer 40k. The lore is so deep and so vast that people have made entire YouTube careers just talking about it. Just talking about it. There are lore channels about Warhammer 40k. It's a Massive setting, huge fan base, and a lot of people get really into it. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I like some of the books. I like books. They're good. I think the video games kind of look like trash, but then again, I don't really play too many video games, but no, some of the books are okay. I think the miniatures are way too expensive, and but it has generated a lot of really cool cosplay. I will say that. So... Why does feminism not like Warhammer 40k? I think this, I think their reasoning is incredibly flawed and it's kind of indicative of a larger problem within that political movement. Uh, they say that, and this is the, this is the complaint, that Warhammer 40k is not inclusive enough as a setting. Now, anyone who has even vaguely grazed the surface of Warhammer 40k and especially the people that have read the lore, and most certainly the people that have read the deep lore, would know that that is an absurd statement to make of Warhammer 40k, that it's not inclusive by any metric. The setting of Warhammer 40k takes place over the span of... I don't even want to underestimate this, but probably hundreds of thousands of 
human planets, almost every possible conceivable culture, almost every possible conceivable permutation of the human species, every possible permutation of damn near anything can be found in Warhammer 40k. Not being inclusive enough is a absolutely psychotic argument to make of Warhammer 40k. But no, feminism says that the setting is not inclusive enough, because they're saying that, I guess, there aren't enough prominent women in in the 41st millennium of Warhammer 40k. Now, I have read a little bit of the lore. I like the lore, some of it anyways. Some of it's really dumb, but I like some of the lore, and I've read quite a bit, and here's what I'll say about that. Not enough women in Warhammer 40k. Hmm... <sighs> There are entire factions made up of exclusively women. There are also entire factions made up of exclusively men. There are factions that are mixed. There's literally everything you could possibly imagine in between. And speaking of things being in between, feminism saying that it's not inclusive enough. There are there is an entire faction of there's an entire faction in Warhammer 40k whose gender can be described as Whatever I damn well feel like at the time is how that works. Uh, there's an entire faction that reproduces by sporing and typically and kind of has no gender. Actually, there's a bunch of factions that don't have any genders because they're either they're either uh, alien critters or they are sort of shaped by or they're sort of shaped by thought or have mastery over their physical forms or one of the things. And then we have then again, we have entirely female factions. We've got the Adeptus Sororitas. We have the Sisters of Silence. We have the Howling Banshees. They were just all over the place. And yeah, I think they're complaining because one of the most visible aspects of Warhammer 40k is the Adeptus Astartes faction, which is ex an exclusively male faction. But there is a lore reason for that, just as there is a lore reason for the Adeptus Sororitas to be all women. It's all fairly well uh, it's all fairly well written, a lot of these things. And again, there's more or less a club for everybody. If there's something that you enjoy about science fiction, you can probably find it in the Warhammer 40k setting. So why these people are complaining is honestly beyond me. I think it's because it's kind of their job, and therein lies the issue. A political movement is a movement. It goes from point A, which is typically bad according to the people in that political movement, to point B, where you have accomplished your goals, and then the political movement can disband. That is what a movement is supposed to be, hence why it's called a movement. You go from point A to point B based on something that is clearly defined. This is one of the reasons that I this is one of the reasons that the war on terror is such an ill-conceived idea. A war on terror. Terror is a concept that means just being afraid. You're never going to get rid of that. And I know that's not exactly what it means. It means a war on terrorism, which is control of people through use of fear and violence. And if you want but people have been doing that since there have been people, since the idea of conflict has graced the human spirit, there's always been people that control others through fear and violence. To say nothing of many governments, so... I mean, hell, the mainstream media controls people through fear. Yeah, yeah that is their job. I, I don't want to badmouth the mainstream media, but that is effectively what they do. They spread fear because it is profitable, because people go back to the news, because they see it as something that they can identify threats, even if those threats are imaginary, but the threats are imaginary because people love to hear about that. It gets their, gets their adrenaline going, it makes them think that they're being proactive about potential hazards in their environment, and these mainstream media outlets get a tremendous amount of revenue from ads and all sorts of sponsors, political sponsors, of course. You know, you you slip the mainstream media a few million dollars, and all they run are puff pieces on you and hit pieces on your opponents. You know who you are.
I'm getting off track once again. These conversations, one-sided conversations, tend to wander. So, Warhammer 40k not being inclusive enough, yeah, that's a ludicrous statement. Uh, I don't want to say no one should pay attention to it, because I think that you should pay attention to ludicrous statements when people are attempting to control behavior through ludicrous statements. Because these people are basically complaining about something that is not a thing. But why are they doing it? Well, because it gets them followers, because it gets them money. It's become an industry, an industry of outrage. It's no longer a political movement in that sense, or at the very least, certain aspects of it. I'm not going to paint the entire thing with a broad brush, but it appears as if there are people, and this is something that everyone needs to watch out for, especially in the age of information, where any jackass can get in front of a camera and just say things. And if enough people believe them, then more or less that becomes their reality. And what becomes their reality begins to affect their actions in the real world. And that's what you have to be careful about. People will always try to control your actions. People will always try to control your thoughts. You need to be strong enough, mentally, to resist that. You need to make your own decisions and see the world around you as best as you can. Gather your own information. Take multiple sides. Listen to people of different opinions, and see which one is closer to the truth. And then you can act. And you might be telling me, oh, one more voice, this sounds like an awful lot of work. Yes, that is life. Life is work. Life will always be work. Unless, of course, you know, you're born into wealth and celebrity, in which case, you know what, hats off to you, friend. You're born into tremendous, ex extraordinary circumstances, and I hope you do the best with them. So, that was my little rant on Warhammer 40k and its latest detractors. Oh well, I have been one more voice. Have a good day.